So we got a couple of questions we're going to ask each other. Um, I've always seen James on Instagram absolutely killing it with the online coaching fitness sort of space. I've already been asking him questions in the DMs about, you know, some business advice and stuff, but this is a good chance for me to ask him in person. So I thought I'd ask James a few in um, person. So the first one I've noticed, obviously you travel a lot. Like you go, you know, you're in Australia for two weeks, then you're in Bali, then you're over here, you're in the UK, then you go over here, but you're doing all this while maintaining your physique. What's your biggest hack you've found so far? of maintaining a great physique, staying accountable, getting your business done while being able to travel to all these, you know, awesome locations, like Dubai even. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, this year I've done like 10 country. 10, how many? 10, I think this 10 year. 10 countries, yeah, yeah. holy but, shit. And I think the most important thing is to set realistic goals with yourself. Like, I think it's dependent on, are you going away for a week or are you going away for three months? Like, if you're going away for a week, there's definitely a little bit more room to have a bit of flexibility. But if you're going away for longer periods of time and you want to maintain a good physique, then you're going to have to set yourself some boundaries, which might mean staying on track nutrition-wise throughout the day. So bringing protein shakes, bringing protein bars, picking clean options with food, and then maybe having a one-off plan per day. Maybe just one-off plan per week. One of the biggest tips I could give would potentially be making sure that you know, you've got an Airbnb with a kitchen so that you can actually prep food. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, huge man, huge, huge. Like if you rock up and you're just in a hotel room, you're fucked. So yeah. like if you've got a nice kitchen, you're in an area where you're close to a gym, once again, set yourself realistic goals with your, your training. If you're there for months, maybe get a gym membership. If you're there for a week, maybe just train once or twice. Once or twice, but upper I, body, down, lower body, instead yeah. of the full split sort of thing. Yeah. You have to travel in a different way if you want to obviously maintain a physique. Like if you're just going to go on a piss up with the lads for a week, you're not going to be able to maintain no, much, but no. you have to be willing to manage your expectations to understand that you're not and that's okay. And when you're going to get back next week, it's fine. But if you're going and you want to maintain your physique, set realistic goals, bring protein shakes with you, make sure you go for better choices with food, i.e. go for lean cuts of meat, keep fat content low, keep calorie content low, high protein, and then also if you're going to be drinking, making sure that you're going for things like your, your spirits and locally mixes yeah, and beers spirits. and stuff, and making sure that you get straight back on track. Like, yeah. That's my top tip for that. Second question I got for you. Um, what's the most common question you answer out of all your clients that you've got with the board twins? What's like the question that you get so often that you're like, I might as well just address it now and get it out of the way? Mm. There'll be a few. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to think because I get a lot of questions. I think the most valuable things that I could probably give to, because I guess time frame is a lot, uh, is a big question that a lot of people give. You know, like how long is it going to take to get lean or how long is it going to take to add muscle? Because a lot of my guys will go into building phases and they're expecting to add 5, 10, 15 kilograms of muscle in a build. But the reality is, is you know, it takes a long time. This is a very, very long process. So setting realistic expectations with time frames, i.e. if you're going into a build, you're going to have to do it for a long period of time. Like Anton, he's done a year build now. If yeah. you're trying to get in and out for 12 weeks, it's not going to work. Not a lot of us can sacrifice that kind of time, but that's where you, you separate yourself from other people. Is exactly. Like, can you take that sacrifice? Can you do it for a year? Because I've come so far in that year of just taking the, the time yeah. off to do what I have to do. So yeah, 100% I agree. Yeah. Um, Another question that I get from clients is, should you bulk or should you cut? And that's oh, yeah. going to be dependent on, you know, if, you're, if you come to me as a client and you're wondering if you should bulk or you should cut, it's going to be very dependent on your body fat percentage right now. Like if you are a lean person, then you should probably build. Like you don't build muscle in a dieting phase. So you're best Minimal. off. It's maintaining. If you're trying to add maintain. size, you want to spend as much of the time of the year in a building phase as you possibly can. So spending the time in a dieting phase like I am now, I'm accepting the fact that I'm not going to be building muscle. So if you're in a position to build, then build. Be it for a position like, I'm not going to say Anton because he's got a little bit of body fat on him, but it's nothing crazy. Like you could potentially go into a build right now, but I'd always advise if someone came to me like Anton and he was like, I don't know what to do. I'd say, well, let's strip back that last little bit now and then build up from there. And then there. start from there. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. Because you've got a nice long runway to push up and you're going to be a lot more responsive to the food increments as well. So okay. it's going to be dependent on the phase that you're in. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh. Oh. It's going to seem arrogant now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think um, I think my traveling will be over in five years because I've got a hell of a lot of plans over the coming years. Um, I'd like a nice house with a number of properties underneath me. I'd like a number of coaches underneath me, yep. but high quality coaches. So I see a lot of coaches bringing on people that don't represent their brand, but with Built by Board Twins, when we bring people on, we want them to be identical to us. So we're not going to be bringing on a gem pop coach and be like, well, all the general population clients go to them. We're going to be bringing on coaches that are to a level that we see ourselves. 
because yeah. that I think is going to align so much more of our brand and it's I don't think that's why I think a lot of people go wrong when they they get coached underneath them so yeah, I want to yeah. scale Built by Board Twins to a degree where we can help a lot more people create a bigger brand create a bigger name for ourselves, and have a bigger impact on the industry okay. I want to obviously blow up my socials so if you guys see we're pushing YouTube hard we're pushing socials yeah. hard Most, uh, almost thousand subs by the time they're watching this might be a thousand well, I reckon subs. I have a thousand subs by the time they're watching this we'll see so, five years it'll be 100k yeah hopefully so that's kind of where I see myself in the next five years that's and sick man a couple kids and a dog maybe we'll see oh <laughs> nah, the kids nah, nah. the kids maybe. mate oh maybe. yeah that's we'll it you're back so, give them to me I'm ready Anton you've just obviously finished your building phase or your uh, back end of your bolt now yeah. what would be your three top tips for Vulcan. So if you had to give like, if I said right now to tell these guys at home, like if you had to give three top tips for trying to build muscle and Vulcan, what would they be? Liquid calories, number one, <laughs> liquid calories. Number two, um, well this is for a bulk, nutrition wise or training wise, both? Anything, so like I'd say nutrition is where most people struggle with their, okay. their like. I would say nutrition wise, liquid calories is number one. Timing your meals and also training as hard as you possibly humanely fucking can. Because the, the fact is that you're eating so much food. Obviously, first, we'll start with number one, so liquid calories, because if you try to eat whole food approach and only whole food, cool. But you're gonna get so full so quick, and because whole foods are so low calorie, high dense sort of, food, not calorie dense, they're very high volume foods, that you're gonna be so full 24-7, you're gonna be have trouble. Um, digesting it as well. You're always gonna have a full gut. You don't want that. So liquid calories is your best friend. Um, second one I said, what was it? Uh, the timing, which I oh, think yeah, is yeah. the most important thing. Meal timing, meal timing for bulking, because you simply have so many calories that you have to eat in a day that if you say you leave it right to the end of the night, I've done this a couple times myself where it's like 9 p.m. You look at my fitness bar, you open my fitness bar and it says 2,500 calories left to go. And there's nothing worse because you're like, okay, now I'm gonna have to stuff my gut. So definitely meal timing. Make sure you have your breakfast, spread out your meal timings. And number three is train as hard as you humanely fucking can because, you know, you're eating so much food. You're probably getting some nice sleep as well. Your recovery is on point. And you want to try to grow as much as you can. You know, in a deficit, you can train as hard as you can. It's never going to feel as good. So might as well take advantage of that. Take advantage of your hypertrophy benefits that you got. And um, yeah, train as humanly you can. So add on to that last point as well, I'd say, if you're in a surplus, you're going to be putting on X amount of weight per week anyway. So like, if you're putting on half a pound a week, you better make sure that's muscle. Because, you know, I could feed you in that same surplus. If you sit on the couch, you'll still put that half pound on a week and it's going to be fat. The other end of the extreme is that you train your fucking ass off and push up, yeah, yeah. and then you are ensuring that the majority of that weight that you're putting on is going to be muscle. So it's, yeah, be it's going to be the best. Huge tip. I though. would say protein too, but that's for any kind of stage, not just bulk. What's more important, training or nutrition? Oh, as a generalized thing, if you're trying to grow or get lean or anything. I would say, I would say, oh, that's a hard question. You know. I'll, some people say 70% nutrition, 30% training, but I don't believe in that either because if you're just eating a lot of food, you're not going to put on muscle. If you're just eating you know, tiny amounts of food, you're going to lose weight, but you're not going to have any muscle. You're going to shred down everything. So I think you've got to have the mix, especially if you're looking for a physique um, and good composition. You've got to prioritize them both. And there's no one's better than the other. It's one of those things where you're like, you have to one. have yeah. them both. You got a fake one. Nah. What was that? You got a fake one. If you can pick one. Maybe training. Yeah. I would, I would say maybe training. I'd say, to be honest, I'm in agreement with you, but I think there's plenty of people who train for years and years and years and they see little to no results and it's because their nutrition's not on point. So like Anton said, it is hard to pick one because you need to be training to build muscle and then you're also going to have to have your nutrition. Otherwise, you are going to be someone who looks the exact same year after year. And that's not like a, a guarantee, but you know, this is why most people who come to us as clients They've been training for years and then they, they work with us for a small period of time and then make more progress than they've ever made. And it's because if you're eating at maintenance calories, you're not going to build muscle, which is a physical mass. So you need your scale weight going up to build muscle. And to cut body fat, you need your scale weight going down. Fat is a physical mass. So if you're just sat at maintenance, you're not doing anything. You're just spinning your wheels. So yeah, to, yeah, add I to agree. that point there. So you need both, but that's so That's a hard big to one. Pick, you're it? like, oh. Brain was just racing when you asked that question. Last question would be, can I drink and still make progress? Uh, I would say, 
depends how much you drink. Is it one to two drinks? Uh, you know, when you go out and have a social occasion with friends, yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. But if you're drinking, getting plastered out every single weekend, fuck no. Sli um, alcohol affects your sleep so much. It increases your cortisol levels, which means, um, and cortisol is obviously catabolic, so it means more muscle protein breakdown. So all the muscle that you're trying to put on, you're just breaking it down and, you know, after that cortisol effect and you got high stress, you're gonna be building no to little, little to no muscle, basically. So there's no point in really drinking so much throughout your weekend. Yeah. So my take on drinking and making progress is just making sure that you handle it in the best way possible. Now, will you make the same amount of progression if you're drinking versus not drinking? Absolutely not, to follow on to Manton's point a second ago. But there are best practices that you can take to make sure that if you are gonna drink, that you can stay as on track as possible. So, and they're gonna be, one, making sure that you go for better choices of your alcohol. So as opposed to your beers, wines, whatever that may be, go for your spirits and locale mixes. You know, you're looking at a 250 calorie beer or a 40 calorie shot of vodka with a zero calorie mixer. Make sure that you're not binge eating after your night out with kebabs and things like that. And my third top tip would just be make sure that you get straight back on track after because I see time and time again, people go out for their night out and it turns into three days off plan because the next day they wake up and it's a Macca's breakfast. They don't get back into training and that turns into vicious cycles. Yeah. So I think for best practices, get straight back on track and you can still make progression, but it won't be optimal. And to add to that as well, the biggest advice I've been given from my previous coaches and my own experience is banking your calories. So if you like flexible dieting and you can track your food and do the same thing with your alcohol, make sure when you, you know you got a social occasion coming up and you know it's gonna be a big night, why Try don't you drinks. save like 800 to 1,000 calories aside so you can have that eight drinks and you know, make sure you're still on target. If weight loss is your target, you gotta make sure that each calorie counts, you know? So yeah. that's another approach as well.